Alright everyone, what's happening? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, Jan. I hope you, you, yes you there, are doing well. And welcome to today's video, which is a video explaining why Chelsea Football Club are actually already the complete package. Now, bear with me, I'm going to explain that. It's basically talking about the club, the club's project, the club's current players and the manager. And explaining why really Chelsea are on a really positive road and they're actually pretty good as they are and I'll explain all of that in this video. And a quick reminder to you guys to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notifications icon because I upload every single day on this channel and I want you lot to keep up with the content so please do subscribe and you know what like the video please to help your boy out. Right so Chelsea why is Chelsea the complete package? Let's start with the ethos, the philosophy, the young yet inexperienced coach Frank Lampard. Chelsea have enjoyed a range of elite, experienced, international, European managers of late who have won, who have got their philosophies, who have done well. But lately, certainly the last couple of years, really the top echelons of the Premier League have been dominated by teams like Liverpool and Manchester City with how they play. A high octane, high press, direct style of football. Now Frank Lampard, for all his inexperience, he does want to play this kind of football. And you know what? He's not a completely new, naive character. This man has won it all in football. He's a leader, he's a very intelligent individual, and he's smart enough to see what's working in the Premier League and wants to implement that pretty much into his own style of football. This is the kind of footballing approach that works against the elite teams. As an example, Chelsea recently have come up against Liverpool twice, once in the Super Cup and once at home in the Premier League. In both games, Chelsea were more than a match for Liverpool and arguably were unlucky in both of these games. Playing against Liverpool really is the barometer of how good your team is. They're probably the most settled 11 from top to bottom in terms of quality, chemistry and the way they play. Obviously Manchester City are an absolute machine and can demolish sides but for me Manchester City if you're going to make the argument they're the best it's probably because they've got the bigger squad as well but if Liverpool's 11 bottom to top are all fit they are superb. Now this inexperienced new fresh young academy fueled Chelsea side have no issue playing against this Liverpool team. They were undone by silly, naive moments, mainly set-piece defending. Now, set-piece defending is a basic, basic thing in football, and you can argue, sure, because it's a basic thing, it makes the team not good if they can't execute said basic thing, but the truth is, these are elements in the side that can be coached out of the team. In terms of your general play and open play and your footballing philosophy and your approach, Chelsea are actually very, very good, and they're there. They've shown in their 4-3-3 they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the very best, the champions of Europe, but Frank Lampard and Chelsea have also demonstrated pragmatism of going to a three-back system, playing a 4-2-3-1, playing a 4-4-2 diamond, and changing shape while mid-game. All top elite teams need to be able to do this. No matter how good your initial philosophy and in footballing approach is, you need to be able to change shape in a game. Look at Pep Guardiola's first title winning season with Manchester City where they won 100 points that year. Pep does indeed start with a 4-3-3 like Frank Lampard generally likes to do but they always change shape in and out of possession and there's an elite tactical mentality to Manchester City's game. Frank Lampard is trying to induce that into his Chelsea side but still having this sort of forward thinking direct free expression of his young attacking players. So in terms of modern direct football and philosophy and approach Chelsea have got it right. They're doing the right thing. They're not too dogmatic in their approach with, say, how Sarri was, or even to a degree how Antonio Conte was. The adaptability is there, yet the initial approach of the high octane, high press, fast passing, direct football is present in this Chelsea football side. So in terms of the footballing approach and the coach's mentality, the pragmatism with it, and also the lack of ego and willingness to adapt, it's all there at Chelsea. And in terms of general performances, the good ones, the weaknesses are 
things like set piece defending, soft stuff, stuff that should be able to be coached, no real mega flaws in the team and that should be encouraging for Chelsea fans, Chelsea, Frank Lampard etc. But how good is this Chelsea side at the moment? When I say Chelsea are the full package already, of course I've got to be talking about the personnel, the players too right? When people see their team underperforming or not getting results, they look for a part of the pitch and target right well that's a weakness there, we don't have X person there. But I'm going to take you through a fully fit Chelsea team. In the goalkeeping position, obviously Chelsea have got academy player coming to be the third goalkeeper and rotate. They've got Willy Caballero, who's obviously been a very good player over the years and a good Premier League and domestic cup performer. And they have Spain's number one, the world record fee, Kepa Aretha Balaga in goal, who's an excellent goalkeeper. He has shipped a lot of goals recently, but that's to, like I said, these little naive moments or defensive lapses that need to be coached out of the side, but generally Kepo is a very, very good goalkeeper. Right, it's so a centre-back position. Chelsea have four starting level centre-backs, but really looking at the earlier performances in the side, if you have a starting centre-back partnership of Antonio Rudiger and Fikayo Tomori, you have a formidable duo there. Rudiger is a very strong, intelligent footballer, starts for Germany and probably Chelsea's best defensive centre-back. And Tomori has long been a promising young footballer. His recovery pace is absolutely unmatched. He's a very good technical footballer on the ball. And let's not forget, he won Derby's Player of the Year at centre-back last season. A very, very promising player. In the full-back positions, obviously you have the wing-back option of Marcus Alonso. That's good as a wing-back. But Emerson is a very, very good left-back and has been excellent for Chelsea in the opening stages this season and indeed the majority of last season. So really, Chelsea don't need anyone else at left-back to be starting. Emerson's incredibly highly rated. His statistics and metrics this season has been immaculate and he's a superb left-back. In the right-back position, that might raise some eyebrows. Obviously, Azpilicueta has been incredibly infuriating in terms of doing really good moments in terms of service when he gets into the final third. And he is really, deep down, a very good one-on-one -on -one defender, but he's not the best conventional right-back. But enter young Reese James. Reese James was Wigan's player of the season last season and he got into team of the season in the championship. Like Fikayo Tomori, he is incredibly highly rated. A physical specimen, incredibly technical on the ball, very fast, very strong, great service, great defender, can play in midfield. The modern dynamic fullback. Again, look back at Liverpool, why they're so, so good is they've got very good settled fullbacks in uh, Robertson and Alexander Arnold. In terms of talent, ability, speed and skill, Emerson and James could be those kind of fullbacks. When they're settled into the side, look no further in terms of talented players to be starting in your 11. Obviously, in midfield, Chelsea are flush. They've got the world class. And Golo Kanto, who just seems to be the complete player now. They have Jorginho, who's finally being rated as he should be as a very talented technical footballer. Kovacic is also very, very good. Barkley's a very serviceable midfielder. Mason Mount is obviously one of Frank Lampard's favourite and another super promising young player. Chelsea have Ruben Loftus-Cheek to return to the side, who is an absolute beast and performs in the Premier League so, so well. Chelsea are basically completely flush in midfield. And when it comes to the forward line, Chelsea are looking okay as well. That was a concern with the striker problem. Chelsea have World Cup winner Olivier Giroud in the side, which is an ultimate plan B. You know what you're going to get with Giroud, and he's a very, very good player to have in your squad. And you know what? He's done pretty darn well for Chelsea since he signed. Chelsea have a rotational striker, Michy Batshuayi, who's a very good finisher, but has yet to prove himself on the side is still young and is a good player to have in your squad. And the biggest concern for Chelsea was the leading number nine, who's gonna score the goals. But again, step up yet another academy promising player in Tammy Abraham, who's got a burning desire to play for Chelsea and is a super skillful and pacey young footballer, striker number nine and just bagged a load of goals already and looks like he could be the real deal. So maybe strikers aren't a problem either. And when it comes to wide forwards slash wingers, Chelsea have a bunch as well. They obviously have Pedro and Willian, the senior experienced wingers. And Willian, you know what's been pretty good since he's come into the side. He could do with a goal or two. Pedro is obviously a very industrious hard worker. Both of these players are probably over the bell curve, certainly on their way out of Chelsea, but they bring experience and skill and they're good to have in the squad. Christian Pulisic is the big money signing who hasn't played much for Chelsea yet, but will be rotated into the side. Obviously, he's very, very young like the rest of the Chelsea young players, and he will 
get his time at Chelsea, but he's incredibly talented and we've seen it over the years since he was 16 playing in the Bundesliga. So he's a, a superb asset to the club and a superb choice to have as a wide forward and probably is the future of Chelsea. Speaking of the future of Chelsea, Callum Hudson the door as well to complete that four winger set and Mason Mount can play on the wing as well. Callum Hudson the door is an absolute worldly talent. He's just committed his long term future to Chelsea for five years, as have many other young Chelsea players actually, if they're penning new contracts left, right and centre. And Hudson Odoi can pick up the mantle of Aiden Hazard, he's that good on the ball. So can Loftus Cheek actually from midfield, but Callum Hudson Odoi is an absolute superstar in the making and he will be excellent for Chelsea and is returning to the side like many of the aforementioned players. In terms of a fit Chelsea side, bottom to top, they could be the complete package in terms of young, dynamic, talented, skillful players that have good chemistry with each other already. Provided everyone is fit, they are a very good squad. Sure, there might be a bit of naivety in there, maturity to come and a need for development and growth, but in terms of the potential, there's no ceiling to it. It's there and it's all ready to explode into the Premier League scene. So Chelsea have the personnel, they have the philosophy, the right philosophy for modern day football. They have a young, intelligent coach. They have the players who are you know, really want to play for Chelsea and the coach and the fans are finally back on side with a Chelsea coach and there's a feel good factor around Stamford Bridge again. People understand that with everything considered with Eden Hazard leaving and a few other issues at the club at the moment, there will be growing pains but in terms of what's happening on the pitch, the intention, the pragmatism and the performance levels from the players, it's all super positive. Coaches are now piping up saying actually Chelsea look like they're doing the right thing, they look very very good and obviously they're finally using that world class academy and bringing through some of the best young players in the world. As per usual there's sort of doom and gloom from the papers about Chelsea but the truth is they are doing everything right and in terms of what's in the club now and both coaching staff, young players, signings and direction, Chelsea are actually already the complete package. Anyway what do you guys think? Do you agree with me? Do you think this is Chelsea on the right path and it will just take time, development and growth or do you think Chelsea need to make loads of big money signings and get a new manager? Everyone's entitled to their opinions, I'm really interested in hearing yours, get down in the comments below and let me hear it or read it. If you have enjoyed the content today guys please do like the video, that would mean a lot and why not subscribe to this channel if you are new. You're welcome to support the channel as well on either Streamlabs or Patreon, the links are in the description and you can follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me guys, I hope you lot do enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby